Hello, this is my personality pattern presentation. I'm Scott Patterson. I go to Walsh University. This is uh, based on Milan's theory of evolutionary personality um, as of 2011. Um, this presentation is on uh, chapter 10 of his 2011 textbook, uh, Reliable Styles, Constricted Types, and Compulsive Disorders, the RCC Personality Spectrum. So we'll start by looking at the polarities for the motivating aims. For the most part, uh, if we're looking at treatment-oriented traits, the major distinction of RCC is a distinct yet uh, ambivalent, this conflicted other directedness, as you can see down here in replication, it tends to be really strong towards other, uh, maybe even getting outside towards the maladaptive range. But there's this this conflict here, this this um, self versus other orientation is 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 not it's not a happy place so much all the time. Often results in uh, insecurity and indecisiveness, this feeling of being torn between wanting to assert yourselves and and, and be really active uh, in your environment, but even though you've got this really strong passive adaptation and, and really you're, you're more focused on outwardly attending to the needs of others. As a result, you get this insecurity, this indecisiveness, this overtly passive demeanor that may actually be harboring uh, very intense desires to rebel. This personality spectrum uh, is very consistent and it's almost always unwavering, uh, resulting in, unfortunately, a pretty good amount of emotional distress uh, for people who are finding themselves far on the outsides of these polarities, just from this inability to reconcile the opposing motivations and results in anxiety and frustration and feelings of inadequacy. And so a lot of people on the spectrum will exert control as a defense mechanism. If we look over on this side now at the personal logic uh, domains, the, the sort of spectrum, you'll notice that the larger circles, the, the more important foundational aspects of personality, the functional domain of cognitive style and expressive emotion and the interpersonal conduct are, are really their, their central ideas. And you'll notice there's there's overlap within them because these different aspects will sort of, they've got like this bi-directional influence on each other. They'll, they'll influence each other. But for the most part, people on the RCC pet spectrum are marked as being um, expressively disciplined. Um, highly regulated, highly structured, very professional, perfectionist even, can seem uh, a little bit overlapped down here in the structural domain of mood and temper. They, they can seem solemn or uh, detached even. But overall, they like to be uh, respectful in interpersonal conduct, I I adherence to social conventions and properties, as well as you know being overly conscientious sometimes in the matters of morality and ethics. But it really stems from this constrictive cognitive style, this rigid, stubborn, indecisive, notably upset when unfamiliar or novel stimuli or different ideas or customs sort of come their way. On the outside of this, they've got this conscientious self-image of themselves, compartmentalized intra-psychic architecture, and it's just this way of almost splitting things and putting them neatly in their boxes, and some of these boxes with that constricted cognitive style, just they are shut, they're taped shut, they're shoved in the corner, this is not something that we want to be dealing with or thinking about ever. And the reaction formation for intra-psychic dynamics. This tends to be people that are uh, diametrically opposed, and this is where we start getting that conflict. These these deeper, contrary, forbidden feelings uh, are things to be uh, defensively uh, denied and hidden away from others and maybe even hidden away from ourselves. Overall, people on the RCC spectrum, they, they tend to um, lean in to authority and they can they build a large amount of authority and importance for themselves. And again, some of these behaviors can be really adaptive and then some of them can be really problematic and maladaptive as we move outside on the different polarities. Provided on page 514 of uh, Reich's chapter 10 is this uh, nice sample MCMI3 profile showing uh, someone with a compulsive personality. Reich makes a point to state that denial, whether overt or covert, may be playing a role in all of these much lower subscale scores across the board for individuals on the RCC spectrum. It's really, it's, it's a result of that, that stringent, almost a form of a double think for the 1984 fans. But you do notice that we have three pretty good hits for compulsive personality pattern, anxiety disorder, and dysthemic disorder, uh, the, the sort of persistent depression under clinical syndrome. So there, there definitely is a lot to be uh, working on here if this is an assessment that results that you got with a client.
So if we look at the childhood variants, if we're looking at the uh, reliable styles, this would be a reliable, dependable children. Uh, they may struggle with self-assertion, especially if how they're feeling is at odds with what the rule is, but they tend to be seen as very trustworthy, dependable. A good friend, gaining confidence from friends is really important for children with the reliable style. They conform to the rules almost to a fault and tend to avoid any conflict, and they'll sort of avoid it, uh, not just by running away, but by using the main group norms, the main school rules, or the, or the norms that are common in that friend group. Like, well, you know, this is what everybody wants. Uh, they seem calm, but they may be repressed. They do well in school, especially with uh, rote procedural tasks. If you get more into the abnormal, the constricted type children, they tend to be rigid and inflexible, and you'll see that in their play and with their discomfort in social interactions. They'll be uh, unwilling or unable to accept changes in routine and may show a very narrow range of emotion or struggle to articulate their feelings. Uh, they have a tendency to be overly obedient, especially towards adults and the dominant peer, and they prioritize fitting in even though uh, they often will not. They're just seen as, you know, robotically following the rules. Like, I wore the cool pants so I don't get made fun of and then get made fun of anyway. Sometimes they'll struggle to make these deeper connections with peers. And then if we move down to the compulsive children, uh, this is the more disordered level. Uh, we'll, we'll start seeing a perfectionism that stems from this overwhelming fear of failure, that being excessively compliant with adult authority. They have this intense need to be in a like, controlled, well-regulated environment and become very upset if there's any changes or things aren't done correctly. And it could be them doing it or someone else doing it just incorrectly. The, this conflict may be expressed uh, by freezing or shutting down if they're pushed even a little bit. Overall, children who fall on the RCC personality spectrum may seem uh, precocious or developmentally advanced, maybe even uh, hyper-mature, as stated by Reich on page 17 of the 2011 text. As those patterns extend into adulthood, can look at the normal, reliable styles for adults. And the textbook identified two main different sort of subtypes here. You've got a conscientiously reliable and perfectionistically reliable. Conscientiously reliable, that's your dependent, consistent, conforming, dutiful workhorse. They put the needs of others above their self. They tend to be very service-oriented. They keep their word. They fulfill their obligations. Seems like a model citizen, but can be marked by like deeply suppressed feelings of inadequacy. Overly focused on self-faults, uh, minimizing your own strengths may be overly anxious or hesitant about social interactions for fear of committing a faux pas, and uh, can be indecisive and submissive, but uh, might become frustrated and resentful due to this internal conflict, uh, repressed desires, concealed interest psychic content as we're moving towards further out on the maladaptive, maybe even getting into the types instead of the styles. But first, we also have perfectionistically reliable uh, style. This is your systemic pragmatist, just uh, overly objective, but dread making mistakes and any fear of taking risk. Uh, they might be exposed for the fraud they think deep down that they are. Uh, a lot of times we get bogged down or lost in the weeds just to focus on the details and the, the minutia of everything. They have this intense fear that others are going to perceive their inner uh, deficiencies and those will come to the surface. And so sometimes they'll even, they'll, they'll really constrict and really sort of uh, start pushing those down, hiding them from others. And they often seem quiet and reflective, but they tend to actively avoid introspection because they don't want to face these inadequacies for themselves either. They may be also unsettled if their work was easy or enjoyable, like they don't deserve to enjoy work. Work is for work, and that is a that is a separate thing. I'm sure uh, there are others that you can imagine at any level, any version of these personalities, any kind of mix and match. Remember, all of this is, in fact, a spectrum. So there's a potential for a much more normative, less extreme internal landscape. I would propose that a person can be both very reliable and a good hard worker and also be uh, highly introspective. Overall, though, you're seeing the, the main style here is going to be a lawful good in Dungeons & Dragons character. Next, we have the abnormal, constricted type Types, and they have two subtypes that they've identified in the text here. You have the bureaucratically constricted, which really just fits the mold of like the, your stereotypical like bureaucrat who does it for the love of bureaucracy. Uh, and instantly, Hermes from Futurama came to mind, which is why I put uh, the gif of him right up above me there, just basking in the glory of his paperwork and following the system. And they, they really buy into these traditional hegemonic, tried and true, trusted values, um, but they don't necessarily find these rules to be restrictive. And they'll seek out boundaries for fear of inability to controlling their impulses. So the, the rules are, are, are a safety base, not cage that keeps them in. Now, they tend to be punctual and meticulous and really uh, fit in well in a hierarchical system. Um, they may exhibit some inflexible, unimaginative thinking, and they tend to be a little bit closed-minded and unable to accept any kind of nuance. There's also the parsimoniously constricted individual, and uh, this would be less of a lawful good, more of a lawful neutral, sort of a live and let live. They're, they're closed off emotionally and logistically, very protective of their self, not just their own thoughts and feelings and internal environment, 
environment, but their, their possessions, their stuff. You could see some miserly and some hoarding tendencies. Um, they may view themselves as just empty and vulnerable deep down and harbor high levels of resentment and rebelliousness that they, they sort of just keep keep pushed down so that no one can see it, including themselves. And they'll be overly polite, but detached because they tend to use that politeness as a defensive barrier to keep people at arm's length. And moving into the compulsive disorders in adults, you've got the puritanical compulsive personality side. Um, this is a, is a true right fighter. Uh, everything is black and white. There is no middle ground. Uh, marked by anger, obsessional, inflexible ideations. Just no, no capacity to accept any kind of nuance. Just righteously indignant. The ends always justify the means. Yes, we're talking about a lawful evil character here sometimes even. Uh, almost always on the edge. It's this white knuckled suppression of the feelings and, and a grim demeanor to go with it. Often can be uh, someone who, who is a self-hater and maybe very bigoted or overly dogmatic and antisocial, but they're towing the line and they, they maintain their values no matter the cost. And uh, stemming from the same inability to sort of deal with and integrate and rectify the oppositional impulses with that other dependent replication, polarity on the motivating aims, uh, you've got the bedeviled compulsive. This is, this is when the uh, failure to keep control, dialectical struggle, and just unsuccessful at maintaining the facade at all times. And as a result, well, uh, you'll see this ambivalent waffling, this flipping back and forth. But then when they when they go too far to the other side, they, they'll self-punish when they lose control. They need to comply with others' wishes, a deep-seated desire, but they also have that same deep-seated desire to express their own needs and interests. Often when they're asked to, when they're put in situations where they need to be decisive, they will be very indecisive and may become completely avoidant of the entire situation if you're pushed, as resulting in an overly logical, rhetorical version of procrastination. You may even develop um, obsessions or compulsions as a means to control the irrational thoughts and feelings. Like if I, if I cross the door three times, then I'll be able to maintain control, uh, that sort of thing. So Milan goes through uh, the differential diagnosis uh, for uh, the RCC spectrum by first starting to look at other personality disorders that uh, have a lot of overlap and a lot of similarity. Uh, you've got differential styles, attached types, and dependent disorders, DAD, or DAD as I've been calling it to myself, uh, apathetic styles, asocial types, schizoid disorders, or AAS. Um, the other spectra that were mentioned in this chapter that had at least one conflicted polarity um, would be discontented styles, resentful types, negativistic disorders, Disorders, that's DRN, or abuse styles, abnormal types, masochistic disorders, double AM, assertive styles, denigrating types, sadistic disorders, ADS, and then other spectra that were mentioned that are interpersonally imbalanced with interpersonal conduct sort of being at odds with uh, other aspects of the personality. Uh, again, we have dad, uh, sociable styles, pleasuring types, histrionic disorders, that's SPH, confident styles, egotistical types, narcissistic disorders, CEM, aggrandizing styles, devious types, anti social disorders, ADA. And then if we move along to the other side, um, specifically mentioned with obsessive compulsive disorder in the differential diagnosis in the DSM-5 TR, you have uh, anxiety disorders and specific phobias that need to be ruled out. Uh, major depressive disorder, like a uh, major depressive disorder, or MDD, uh, body dysmorphic disorder, trichotillomania, excoriation disorder, hoarding disorder, anorexia nervosa, but both types, and then compulsive behaviors and substance use disorders are thrown in there as well. Milan mentioned several uh, personality spectra and different syndromes. Uh, from an uh, older version of the DSM because this was published in 2011 and he was actually pretty instrumental in attributing to big portions of the DSM. So Milan specifically mentioned a uh, dad and double AS and then mistrustful styles, paranoid types, paraphrenic disorders or MPP and a DRN again. And then also mentioned oh, under this uh, personality spectra uh, RCC, you might see many phobic syndromes or anxiety syndromes, uh, somatoform syndromes. So that where you those psychosomatic uh, symptoms like oh, my stomach hurts, my, my heart is racing, that sort of thing. Thing. Uh, dissociative syndromes, uh, probably from that constriction and that almost like double think ability that the constrictive type and the compulsive disorder could show. Mood syndromes and uh, schizophrenic syndromes. And then in the DSM-5, uh, they listed that 76% of people diagnosed with OCD are also diagnosed with some form of anxiety disorder. 63% are diagnosed with depressive or bipolar disorders, with 41% of that being MDD. You see, again, a lot of similarities to Milan's work, just uh, different labels now to represent our, our newer understanding and way of conceptualizing these problems. Impulse control disorder had a 56% co-diagnosis. Uh, substance use disorders were 39%. While a specific uh, instance rate was not given for PTSD, um, they did mention in the co 
comorbidity section that a diagnosis of PTSD um, may delay the onset of symptomology and therefore diagnosis of obsessive compulsive disorder. So if we look over here at the potential biogenetic factors, Reich said that there was no real consistent pattern in phenotypic expression. Moreover, that there's just such a large variety of people with completely different biological traits that all would fall on the RCC spectrum. However, uh, Strom et al. Uh, did just publish in 2024 a really cool uh, GWAS genome-wide association study that found significant genetic correlation for symptomology consistent with a diagnosis of OCD, um, showing probable polygenic uh, genetic contribution for this disorder as shown by the really cool results hanging out over down here. So they proposed that OCD actually this falls at the extreme end of the bell curve that is representative of normal psychological and somatic patterns shared by most people. Milan really was was uh, suggesting that uh, the, the nurture plays a much larger role in development of the RCC personality spectrum. Uh, keep in mind, though, that the biological dispositions and environmental responses are bi-directional. You know, we, we've got cognitive pruning, we've got different uh, stages of development, and then on top of that, we're starting to really understand how um, the different life experiences can lead to different epigenetic factors and different tags and markers being set between and outside around the genes that can affect the way that genes get expressed. And a lot of these can be inherited and also passed down to children. But if we look over here at the experiential history, uh, we've got overly controlling punitive parents that have a tendency to lead to the, especially the abnormal and disordered personality aspects from just the overly directive, overly strict parents, uh, overly high standards, and, and a really uh, control based on uh, restriction and constriction. You won't do this. You shouldn't do that. You can't do this. You must not do that. And so the, the kids sort of work out for themselves. Okay, like if I stay on the, on the straight and narrow here, then, then I will not be punished. And so you can see where uh, the existence dipole coming in for a little bit heavier on pain than pleasure and sort of this uh, avoidance of things going wrong, avoidance of being found out as a fraud. This starts really early on, especially when the parents uh, use a disciplinary style that is based on uh, restriction and constriction uh, and not hostile, uh, contingent based on behaviors. Uh, a lot of as the children get older, they, they learn to self-repress. They lose the ability to build their own self-confidence and the ability to make any kind of decision in novel situations because these decisions have been made for them. And as uh, children uh, get older and start reaching into the pubertal stage, you have a sort of the helicopter parents and the focus on the focus is on being good and proper and using guilt as a form of control as children get older and become emerging adults. But all the while, uh, the activities, the behaviors, everything that everything about what the child is going to be doing is heavily dictated by the parents is all plays a major role in the development of the RCC personality. And as a result, uh, the these internal like rewiring, you start getting these self perpetuating processes through this like f this, uh, this faulty system. System. Uh, it works better than anything else. So there's an unwillingness or even an inability to explore other coping or defensive strategies uh, for people on the RCC spectrum. They've got this uh, this deep seated fear that they're making it worse, and they, they may even lack the insight altogether. This might all be subconscious from the, just the, the years of just uh, shoving it down and putting it in a box, and not even wanting to open or think about looking at the box. This familiar repetition to help uh, sort of uh, bolster your defenses and keep keep everything on the straight and narrow. These these self imposed rule sets, and uh, often maintain their behavior as much as their parents did through uh, self-criticism, through guilt. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't feel this way. And so what goals can we set to sort of shift out of that, uh, those problematic thinkings? I mean, obviously we want to try to break a self-perpetuation cycle, uh, but we also crucially need to balance those polarities, especially uh, that conflicted self-other polarity on the motivating aims. A lot of the therapy might need to be focused on reducing anxiety and reducing those psychosomatic symptoms and, and addressing and combating uh, obsession and compulsions, uh, the focus on loosening rigidity, accepting nuance, welcoming in the unknown, and uh, restructuring and reducing the reliance on these rules. So there are some potentially beneficial uh, modalities and integrative strategies that can be used. Uh, the big one that I'm sure came to mind already is, uh, is cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, looking at cognitive restructuring, even cognitive reorientation, and also fighting some of those anxiety and compulsive behaviors with exposure and flooding or modeling and role play, a little uh, behavioral experiment. You can also imagine uh, that because uh, a big source of the stress and anxiety, uh, we can really use a lot of the third wave uh, kind of approaches like uh, mindfulness-based stress reduction or even working through acceptance and commitment therapy, looking at like, what what is it that you want? What, what are you doing that moves you towards that? What are you doing that keeps you from that? Well, how can we learn to accept what is? And I think a, a really powerful way of reorienting this idea of walking the straight and narrow could actually be taking the concept of walking the middle path from dialectical behavioral therapy because they do have these 
because there, there is this need to shift away from avoiding uh, the dialectical nature and to focus on flexibility and adaptive and get away from this idea that everything is black and white and the, and the middle path is really about staying in the gray area and accepting, understanding the nuance. Um, there could be a good use for building that trust and adaptive communications and staying really open using Rogerian and uh, person-centered therapy. There's even a good argument in the text from Reich uh, on how the psychodynamic therapy could be uh, really crucial here in helping build client awareness, practicing introspection, and face the, the deeply repressed and sort of constricted aspects of their personality. Transference therapy could be helpful in um, dealing with uh, the, those painful early experiences and, and, and helping to sort of soothe the inner child who's still very upset and work through some of those parental relationship issues. However, uh, counseling does uh, always come with risk. There, one of the aspects of the RCC spectrum is this almost purposeful stagnance in the pre-contemplation phase and this adherence to the harsh internal rhetoric. There may be a need to sort of use some aspects from REBT or choice theory to sort of help them get to understand and examine their issues. They're like, well, let's look at what you're doing. How is that really working out for you? But keep in mind that we may need to go the other way and just even if you're using some form of that to just be excessively gentle because any change represents unknown differences that the client could catastrophize into just an impending disaster. We may need to help them know, like, you, you are safe here. We don't need to uh, over-intellectualize things here. We can we can work through them. We can experiment with this different way of being, and then when you're comfortable, we can move it outside these walls. And I think that a non-judgmental listening cycle could really be crucial here, and especially in um, maybe being a little bit more ready to use, like, reflection and use feedback when, uh, when our client gets hyper focused on uh, the details like well you said four out of five so I went with four and and or even being ready to hit the brakes if the subjective uh, unit of discomfort becomes too high and maybe just being more ready to check in on that like hey scale one to ten how how is this going for you how do you feel about this thing that we're trying right now and just be ready for uh, repressed anger and uh, guilt for losing control afterwards and that is my presentation on the RCC personality spectrum for reliable styles constricted types and compulsive disorders here is the references list and I will make myself smaller so that you can bask in all its glory, especially that really cool uh, genome study. I would highly recommend, uh, you know, just, just a little light reading in some uh, high order genetics research. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching.